Next up, the third and final logical operator we'll see for now, the not operator. So unlike or or and, where we have two characters, ampersand, ampersand, or with or, we have pipe, pipe. With not, we have a single character, one exclamation point. And it works a little differently. We don't have a left and a right side like we did with or. We have one side, we have the other, same thing with and. Not is just going to operate on a single expression, and it returns true if that expression is false. So we put exclamation point in, in front of some expression. If that expression returns false, when you have the not in front of it, the whole thing is now true. It kind of negates it. So here's a, a couple of very simple examples. We've seen null, which is a falsy value. When you put an exclamation point in front of it, we end up with true. Not null. True. Not zero. True. Not empty string. True. Now if we try it with a truthy value like 45, we get false now because 45 is truthy. So then not true is false. Same thing with a string that is truthy and you can see where I'm going. We can also use not to negate actual expressions that are not just a single value. So something like zero equals zero is truthy. It's true. When we put the exclamation point, the not in front, we get false or three less than or equal to four, that is true, the exclamation point gives us false. The scenarios where you use this can vary greatly, um, and it's hard to show all that useful of an example, and I'll explain why in just a moment. All of these operators, and, or, not, along with the conditionals themselves, if, else, if, and else, are really flexible, and there's often a ton of different ways of achieving the exact same logic or the same outcome but you can write it differently. You can use uh, nested things as we've seen. You could use ands. You can combine certain things with not in order to make them work. So let's take a look at an example we saw earlier. We had the logged in user example where we were trying to check if a user was logged in or if this variable had a value, we wanted to do something. But now let's flip it and say that we want to check if there is not a logged in user so that we can boot them off the web page. They're in the wrong spot, they shouldn't be here. So if there isn't a logged in user, do something. How would we do that? With what we've seen so far without not, we would do if logged in user, and then else is where we would put our code. The code down here would run when there is no logged in user, when it's undefined or null, empty string. But if we want to use not, if we don't have an otherwise, we just want to check if there's not a user, we could write this. If not logged in user, we'll console.log. Get out of here. And if I run it, we end up with get out of here. But if I change this to now have a value, we don't get anything. So we could have written this, as we saw earlier, with the regular if, put some code in here for when the, the user is logged in, and then in the else put this, but if we don't have two situations, we just want to check if there's not a logged in user, we could use not. So here's another very simple example. Most of these, as you've already noticed, are quite silly and not they don't seem immediately useful. But these pieces of logic, the tools we're learning, I, I promise they'd come into play all the time when you're creating real applications. We just don't have those tools yet. So we're kind of faking it with logged in user. Or what we're going to do now, we'll do something like flavor. Flavor will be grape. So we are a online snow cone stand and we mail you snow cones pre-made using dry ice. <laughs> we only have two flavors. We have grape and we have cherry. So if a user orders something that is not grape and it's not cherry, we need to tell them you can't do that. So we have a, a couple different ways of doing this. We could check if flavor is not equal to grape and flavor is not equal to cherry, we'll console.log, we don't have that flavor. We don't have that flavor. So that's one way of doing it. Um, if I change this to watermelon, for example, refresh the page, we don't have that flavor. But if we wanted to write it another way, which is kind of what I'm getting at here, we have a lot of options. We could also say if flavor 
equals grape or flavor equals cherry and then negate that entire thing with parens around it we would read this as if not flavor is grape or flavor is cherry so this logic is basically the same thing we wrote up here the same exact outcome or it's true in the same scenarios and false in the same scenarios but we've written it differently i definitely prefer well i think i prefer this one it's easier fewer operators but this is totally valid and remember the way it works is that we have or which is in parentheses so if one of these is true the entire thing is true and that would mean flavor is grape or flavor is cherry so if flavor is grape this becomes true this doesn't matter because it's an or so the whole thing becomes true like that and then we negate that so the whole thing becomes false and then this code would not run but if we had flavor was watermelon for example this is false this is false so this whole or becomes false and then we negate that false which gives us true so let's make sure it works I'll uh, comment this one out we'll console.log we only have grape and cherry refresh right now we're uh, using watermelon is that right we only have grape and cherry I change it to grape no problem we don't get that console.log so it's not the most riveting example but I wanted to show that we can rewrite things two different ways I still prefer this one but not gives us flexibility and sometimes it is actually useful but I just wanted to show we have flexibility all of this stuff can be rewritten multiple ways there's still further ways we could rewrite this we could nest instead but I won't get into that for now so that is not the third logical operator and or and not